I think you're going to have a whole show in reserve remaining for you because the whole Mother Earth segment is gone. You sent this story and people have been um, yeah, I mean, it's a really citing good and retweeting the, the cult of Greta Thunberg yeah. from yeah. Spiked. And yeah, it is, it's an interesting story because it's written by Brendan O'Neill. And Brendan O'Neill, I did an event with Brendan, so I know Brendan. I've, I've met him now a few times. And he's a, I, I like Brendan, even though he doesn't believe in property rights. And he's, a, he's, he's in a sense, he claims to be a Marxist. Mm -hmm. And yet, he is good on a lot of, on some issues. He's good on, on certain aspects of, of uh, freedom of speech. And here he's excellent on analyzing how the environmentalist doomsday cult of global warming has spread and has these leaders and he and he points to this young girl, 16 year old girl, and he says she even has this look of, I, I, I thought Joan of Arc when when he was talking about it, right? She's possessed by by the spirits to save humanity from the evil pagans or whatever. The um, look of apocalyptic dread in her eyes. It yeah, I mean, I think that's a Joan of Arc look, you know, fighting. Mm -hmm for what for, for for christianity for god for jesus in her case it's it's for for salvation from from but he he points out that you know this is a, a rebellion against reality a rebellion against industrialization a rebellion against capitalism a rebellion against, against people even he says it against yeah. people against the, that, the masses the ordinary people living their lives it's against them and, and i get i respect the leftist to can make these kind of identifications that's great you know and just shows that we have allies on the left and but this is the thing it's not just a cultural movement now we've got new york city mayor of new york city they have passed a municipal green new deal part of which and i don't know if this is really going to happen or not but we have had de blasio pledge that they are going to ban the classic glass and steel skyscrapers. Why? Because they are, quote, incredibly inefficient. Glass and steel, beautiful skyscrapers. No, no, I mean, they are. It's, it's all to save energy. He's not banning skyscrapers. He's banning glass and steel skyscrapers because of inefficiency. He wants green skyscrapers. I don't know what that looks like, but he wants green Ugly, skyscrapers. Ugly, no windows. Well, but also they would cost a fortune in terms of carbon, to produce because cement, I'm sure cement involves concrete involves massive quantities of CO2 emission. You, you, once you get into this competition about CO2, you discover that everything CO2 is part of life. You can't you can't ignore C CO2 emission. Uh, Liberal Deutsch asked, "What would the Mother Earth save us say when we're done tran uh, terraforming Mars? Would that make them?" Uh, dispensable make who dispensable no i mean then they would say uh universe savers right they would want to save the universe from evil man changing it this is the point for those of you new to objectivism man is the only species that in order to survive certainly in order to thrive mm -hmm. and survival in objectivism really means thriving needs to change his environment needs to modify his environment to fit our survival needs. We do not have the, the, the instincts, the, the, the pre-programming to just live out there in the wilderness from the environment. We actually, because of the way we're made, because the way our biology works, we must change our environment in order to survive as a species and certainly as individuals, right? And so anytime, and, and this is what, the environmentalists hate, they hate man, they hate our rational capacity, they hate our need, our survival need to change the environment. They wanna see a world where man is being eradicated. They wanna see a universe where man is being eradicated because we are the only known being, there might be others in other planets, who must change the environment to fit themselves and they hate that. Why do they hate it? I don't know for, for their nihilistic, psychological, crazy reasons, but they literally hate it. And that is what drives them. It's that hatred. I mean, the, the, the environmentalists are the, the most, they are the man haters. I mean, the radicals, the, the, the committed environmentalists, I think most of them are just ignorant slobs, but the, the, real, the real committed ones. And that's what drives this. So the hatred would just manifest itself in trying to save Mars or trying to save black holes or trying to save 
the universe. It's, and it's not even the universe that they love. It's not, they don't love mother nature. They don't love trees. They don't love mother earth. They don't love Mars. They hate. And, and, and it's not like if you showed them capitalism is really good for mother earth, whatever the hell that means, they would change their mind. No, as long as human beings are alive, they will be pissed off. So for example, I think they, they really like black holes because black holes suck anything into them and destroy everything. So that is their ideal. They have the soul of a black hole. That's right. a common thing because a black hole is kind of a cool physical phenomenon. Anyway. Speaking of- How does Ayn Rand philosopher view the United States of America today? People waiting in gasoline lines, people fearing a possible recession, people wondering whether we will survive as a nation because of military posturing by other countries around the world. Tell me how you feel. About That's a pretty big mm-hmm. statement right there. But first of all, to sum it up, I feel that this country is being destroyed by its philosophy, specifically by its universities. The most dangerous thing in this country today are the universities because they're teaching the kind of ideas that would necessarily have to lead to the destruction of this country. I think that the American people is too good for that kind of program. You notice that the people are turning to the right. That's a very healthy sign, but there is no leadership on on the right. There is no intellectual leadership. There are no ideas. Uh, And it's very possible that the people will be defeated for lack of proper intellectual leadership. However, the basic premise is... Excuse basic me, but then you don't mean Harvard intellectual leadership or Yale intellectual leadership. I mean a Harvard that would be preaching American ideas, more specifically reason, individualism, capitalism. If an institution of the intellectual prestige, which they don't deserve today, but they deserved it at one time, of Harvard... If an institution of that magnitude were preaching the proper ideas, that is the ideas on which America originally was based, or to say it briefly, the philosophy of Aristotle, which was the father of this country, who was. Uh, If they were doing that, you could have the biggest renaissance in the world, still not too late even now. You could have a better renaissance than the first one. This country would come back to life. But today, when all those institutions from Harvard on down are preaching collectivism, mysticism, and above all, altruism, self-sacrifice of yourself, the giving up, the resignation, this, all the disgusting kind of ideas that the whole world has been nurturing for centuries, when they do that, this country can survive. Can you? Can-